Alright, this is one of those few times I post here because usually these problems aren't as bad and I can handle them on my own. This time, however, it's gonna be a little crazy. Let me start from the get-go. Basically, what happens in my family is that my husband, Gail, is very attached to his family, especially his parents. It's gotten to the point where if they jump, he's not going to ask why, instead he's going to ask how high. Obviously, that level of dependence and trust can sometimes come back to bite you, even when you don't realize it. That's what's happening with Gail. He doesn't realize how damaging his dependence is getting. And when I try to tell him about it, he just gets mad at me. The very main reason that all this happened, and the reason I'm posting this story, is because my husband has been spoiling them since the very beginning. I get wanting to take care of your parents. I do. If my parents were living near us, I'd like to take care of them as much as possible too. But I would not do it to the extent that Gail and I do. That's the limit that I understand we don't have to cross. But Gail, unfortunately, does not. My in-laws have been asking us for money since we've both got stable incomes, and it's not like my in-laws are not well off or anything like that. They don't necessarily need the money from us. They can support themselves and even afford certain luxuries. So, they don't need to ask for money, but they still do. Initially, I was okay with it because I understood that they're Gail's parents and I'd need to fit them into our lives as well, but over time, I got a bit icky about it. We've sent them so much money over the past years that if we saved that amount, we'd be able to go abroad on a vacation twice. I told Gail that he should not spend all his money on them simply because, well, then there's nothing left for us to save. But he did not understand. He started arguing with me, telling me that we're living a comfortable and well-fed life. So why can't this spare some extra money we have and just give it to his parents? I tried to make him understand that it's not about not supporting them, it's about him not caring about supporting me. We would need money if we ever decided to have kids, and if we wanted to make a big purchase or anything like that, it looked like he understood my point. But he still was not willing to stop giving them money. That made me so angry that I almost left the house that night. My anger was fueled even more when I remembered how they treated me in the past. If they were nice in-laws, ones who treated me well and let me feel like I was actually a part of the family, maybe I'd be nicer to them. They were horrible to me. They never made me feel like I was a part of the family at all, and when I needed them to be there for me, they weren't. So when Gail and I got married, we weren't that well off. I had just graduated, and it had not been that long since Gail started working as well. This meant that we didn't actually have enough money to invest in a house and buy it. I perfectly remember Gail and I going to my in-laws and having a proper discussion with them telling them about everything we're going through and making them explain how hard it is. However, when we asked for some money to start the process, they immediately said no. It's like they did not even take any time to think it through. Instead, they just gave us an hour-long lecture on how we're adults now, so we need to be responsible and take care of our savings and whatnot. They told us that we needed to work extra hard to achieve our dreams and every other crap they could possibly spit from their mouth. I was a bit frustrated at their response, but I decided not to say anything and just kept my thoughts to myself. Ah, it was heartbreaking to see them not helping out their own children. But if Gail was okay with it, then I thought I needed to be fine with it as well. But then they did it again. A year and a half ago, I inherited a house from my mother. It was a beautiful house, but it needed a lot of work. Obviously, we did not have the money or the resources needed to make these changes. I mean, we had some of the money saved, but we needed a bit more than that. And so, We decided to ask my in-laws again for some money. Just a little sum of money to help us get the house ready to live in. But they said no to that too, and instead they told us to earn our money and stop asking them for money. Not just that, but they told me to sell the house and invest in something that's actually useful, and not something that looks like crap. As soon as I heard that, there were fumes coming out of my ears. This house was very precious to me, as something that was connected to my mother. 
and to hear my in-laws talking about it like it was trash was very hurtful. I did not express that to them because I thought I would look rude, but I should have. Maybe then they would not be as shameless as they are right now. I'll tell you guys exactly why they're shameless, though. So basically, after they rejected us, I gathered money and worked my butt off to renovate the house. I made it look presentable. And I made it look amazing. It was hard, but once I started earning as well, things got a bit easier. So I could manage it. Anyways, it had been a few months since I invited my in-laws for dinner for my mother-in-law's birthday. By that time, the house looked absolutely incredible. I made it as perfect as I could, and I was very proud of it. Moving on, the day they actually came over for dinner, I was expected to go pretty well because, well... Usually, if it's not money-related, the conversation stays pretty squabble-free. Obviously, with these people, there's not one moment where you're not discussing money. So, they come over, and as soon as they enter the house, they, uh, their eyes go wide. Internally, I'm smirking because I know they did not expect me to go this hard on the renovation. Wide eye, they're completing my house way too much. I mean, uh, some compliments are fine, like, oh, you did a wonderful job. Or, oh, your house looks incredible. But there was so much more. Every part of the house, they'd stop, inspect, and then just ask me how much it cost. Why would they ask that? For some stuff, yeah, I get curious about it. Especially because they knew we did not have the money. It's not like they gave us the money either, so I'm sure they were curious as to how I managed to afford all this. But honestly, I found their questions a little rude. It just felt way too forced. Like they weren't actually interested in the job I did or how pretty I made it look. They were just interested in how much it cost, and I actually did not realize it back then, but after what happened during dinner, it all made complete sense to me. Dinner was chaotic, to say the least. It started out very decent. It was a good conversation going on, and it even had a nice flow to it. But then my mother-in-law started talking about dream vacations. First, she asked me what my dream vacation was and where I'd like to go the most, but when I answered her question, it felt like she wasn't really interested and was waiting for me to finish as soon as possible. I gave her what she wanted, of course, and I made my answer very short. Just the name of the place, and then she got all excited all of a sudden. That's when I get a bit suspicious, because there's no way that she was that excited for me. And then she opened up about the real reason behind all the weird acts that they've been doing ever since they stepped into this house. They wanted us to help them build a vacation house. After all the years of rejecting us every time we've asked them for financial help, they've come to us and asked us to pay for the quote vacation house? They're not even poor or anything. Why do they need our help? Why can't they save up enough and get a house for themselves? They think that just because I've managed to get my house to look so gorgeous, we're some sort of rich couple now, I guess? But we're not. I asked them to explain it to me a bit more just so I could have a better idea of what they need and why they're getting a vacation house and stuff. But the response shocked me. They want to get one just because they're bored with their lives and they want a house to be able to go to every other weekend. For some reason, they can't afford the house by themselves. And they told us that they know that we've got money saved up because this house looks like it costs a lot. At that point, I was aggravated, and so I told them we did not have that kind of money to waste. That was very wrong to say, because Gail looked at me like I murdered his parents in front of him. As soon as these words were out of my mouth, he glared at me and told me that anything that we spent on his parents, happiness was never a waste, and I needed to quote, watch what I say, which is ridiculous because he knew I was right. A vacation house is not a necessity to have, and it's not like they're going to die if they don't get it. My father-in-law still works, and they can save up and get one by themselves. They don't want to do that, though. They want us to give them money so they can take the easy way out. Then I remembered that Gail is not an only child. He has an older brother as well, so why weren't they asking him for money? I brought that up because they were getting too defensive and looked like they were about to make a life a living hell for me. Apparently, Seb isn't as financially stable as us, so they don't want to burden him with this. 
Oh, I'm sorry, but I could not keep my mouth shut at that point and I expressed what I was feeling, but I made sure I was not being disrespectful. Seb was earning as much as we were, he just had children to take care of, so most of his expenses were going towards that. However, I wanted to try it for kids as well, and if we kept giving my in-laws money, how would I save enough to take care of my children? The counter-argument we received was that we don't have children right now, which means we've got more money to spare than Seb and his family. Then they started emotionally blackmailing Gail because they knew that they would not be able to get through to me. They started talking about how they were lonely and bored because both their sons had started their own families, which is why a vacation would benefit them really well. Gail fell into the trap. Because why wouldn't he? As soon as his parents get a little bit emotional, he does everything that's asked of him. I knew I could not get him then, but I didn't want my in-laws to know they've won us over, so I told them I'd think about it. The entire dinner after that was spent in awkward silence from my side while they both just interacted with their son. After they left, I thought it'd be peaceful and we'd just go to sleep. I did not think we'd have to talk about what happened immediately, especially because I said I'd think about it. Well. Realistically, I knew we would have to discuss what happened, but I did not think it was going to be this heated. The door had not even shut properly when Gale turned towards me almost gave himself a whiplash in the process. He was very angry and started arguing with me about how I was disrespectful and going against his parents. I tried to make him understand that we need to start saving money properly. We can't just keep giving them money whenever they ask for it. They're grown. They have their own money, and they can get stuff that they need with their own money. We don't need to babysit them in every situation. Well, that was the wrong choice. It blew up into an argument after that, and he started telling me I did not care about his parents, and that if my parents asked for some money, I would not hesitate to give it to them. Which is true. I would not hesitate, but... That's only because my parents have never tried to take advantage of me and have never asked me for money before. If they do ask, I know they're going to do it because of emergencies and if they can't get it by themselves? Not to build a vacation house to spend their weekends in. The argument went on for almost an hour. All while I was cleaning up the house and kitchen after dinner. And then we were getting ready for bed as well, and the argument would not stop, and I knew it was not going to be easy to convince Gail and to make him see why his parents have been doing this for all these years. He thinks his parents were right when they refused to give us money both times that we've asked. Gail kept mentioning how we would not be here if they had not refused to give us money and made us understand the importance of chasing a dream and working hard for it. That was such a stupid thing to say because... His parents are supposed to help you when you're having a hard time, and if they don't do that, why should we help them? Anyways, we slept without finishing the argument because I was tired. I told him I'd sleep on it and we'd discuss it some other day, but what do you guys think? I just want to stop feeling like half the money I earn goes to my in-laws, that's all. I hope Gail understands and stops demanding I give up a ridiculous amount of money. Update number one. Hey guys, it's been a few days since the dinner happened, and everything after that has just been terrible. Gail and I have been fighting non-stop, and we just can't reach a conclusion on what to do. We want different things, and as much as I don't want to give the money, I don't want to hurt Gail as well. On top of that, my in-laws have been constantly calling me. I picked up every time because I want to be the big person in this situation, but they keep on saying the same things every single time I pick up the phone. They ask me if I've made up my mind and try to convince me to give them the money. The last few phone calls have been absolutely ridiculous. First, they started crapping on me and telling me I'm being a bad daughter-in-law by not helping them achieve their dreams. But when I told them that they should follow their own advice and work hard for their dreams like they told us, they get mad. I understand how that might not have been the nicest thing to say because kids usually help their parents out in their dreams when they're a bit older, but in my situation, we've been getting them everything for years. And not once have they thanked us. Another thing that makes me mad is that they've never asked Seb for a single dime in their entire lives. How is that fair? Anyways, their last phone call shocked me to the core. As soon as I picked up the phone, my father-in-law let me know that he knew we had 200k in savings. 
and if I had that much money, why was I lying? I was shocked because I didn't think that they'd find out about our savings. I tried my best to hide this from them because I knew that they'd ask for it and, well, to be honest, I wanted to save it for my future children or any vacations I might want to take with Gail later on. As a family, there are many situations where we may need that kind of money urgently, like in a medical emergency, for example. So, I tried telling them that the savings money isn't for us and I don't intend to use it on luxuries myself either but they would not listen. They told me that I was being selfish and that I should look around me and realize that there were other people that I, quote, have to take care of because they're my family. According to Gail, his parents were his responsibility, and according to his parents, their happiness was also my responsibility as Gail's wife. Which I understand. Honestly, they're not my responsibility, but as their daughter-in-law, I should try to help them make them happy and treat them as my own family. But the question is, when have they ever treated me like family? All they talk to me about is money and how much I can give them. And when I ask for anything, the answer is a straight up no. Later, when I hung up on them and Gail came home from work, I asked him if he had told his parents about our savings. And it turned out that he had in fact told them. I'd specifically asked him not to mention anything about the money to his parents but he didn't listen. He told them because he wanted to and he didn't think that he'd tell me everything in his life because some things are personal. As if we haven't been married for years. Well, that's how it turned into an argument and it went on for as long as the last one did. And slowly, each argument has been getting worse and worse. The things we say are getting hurtful and our volumes are getting higher. We're getting along at all nowadays very bad and I hate it. I miss being the happy couple we used to be before all this started, but I don't want to give in to them. They need to understand that they're crossing boundaries, and that's something I do not appreciate. Update number two. It's been a week since Gail left the house. Do you guys remember how I kept saying that the arguments were progressively getting worse and unstoppable? Well, this is the consequence of that. A week ago, Gail and I had one of our biggest fights. We've never fought this hard before. And it was actually a bit weird how aggressive he was. Obviously, there was no physical aggression. He wasn't raising his hand to me or anything, but his words hit much harder. He basically told me that $100,000 he's planning to give to his parents is not just mine, so he can do whatever he wants with it. He thinks that he was being nice by asking for my opinion and my permission before taking action on his own. But he doesn't need to do that anymore. The fight got worse when he actually gave the money to his parents and he returned home from work one day and did not even bother mentioning anything to me. It wasn't until my mother-in-law called me to tell me that she got the money that I found out that he gave it away. I was enraged. Obviously, we had not discussed giving the money away and he knew I was not okay with the fact, yet he was still going to go ahead and just give it away. He didn't even keep a single dollar for ourselves. The entire 100000 he saved up over the years he gave to his parents. Then when I told him that he needed to get the money back, he told me to shut up and let him deal with his parents all he wanted. Even when I was factually arguing that we're a couple and we should decide on big financial decisions together, he wasn't having it. It seemed like he totally got tired of us constantly arguing because he threatened me with a divorce. Right in the middle of our argument, he suddenly screamed at me and told me if I tried stopping him from giving a share of the money to his parents, he was going to get a divorce and leave me all alone. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I've been with him through everything in his life, and now he was going to leave me because I was trying to put our family first instead of his parents. At that point, all I could ask him was if he did not care about what I wanted and how I wanted to build our life together, have children, and live a happy life. He cared for none of it, but instead he wanted to give all this to his parents while I was suffering in the background. In a moment of anger, he walked out of the house and slammed the door behind him, and it's been a week since he's been home. I've tried texting him multiple times, I've called him so many, and I've left more than a dozen voicemails, but he keeps ignoring them or leaving me on hold. Guys, I'm so hurt because I didn't think I'd ever lose Gail, especially over something as silly as this. 
I've contacted my in-laws, and it turned out that Gail had gone back to live with them for the past week. He hasn't been home once, and I'm so stressed and confused about what's going to happen, and how I'm going to deal with everything. Update number three. So, a few more days into this mess, I decided that I could not keep myself trapped in this family forever, especially if they act as messed up as they are right now. I was not sure about my decision in the early days, but now, after waiting for Gail to come home for more than a week, I've decided that I needed to take action and set him straight. Well, if he wants a divorce, that's exactly what he's going to get, so... I contacted my lawyer first thing that morning and let him know of the situation. She let me know that I could not only divorce Gail, but also take him to court. Well, after the entire meeting ended, I decided that I did not need this house anymore. The only thing it was doing now was reminding me of my husband and all the good and bad memories that we've had together. That's why I decided to sell the house and keep the money for myself. Gail could not even ask for this money legally, because the house was in my name, given to me by my mother, and I could do anything I pleased with it, right? So I sold it. It brought me a lot of money, which helped make the court case much easier to process. So, the next day, well, I finalized the divorce papers and had them sent to Gail. I knew the exact time he received those papers because I got the most heated phone call one could ever get. He was talking about how I was being stupid and it didn't matter because he was going to divorce me as well. And then he got to find out about me taking him to court and he absolutely exploded. Obviously, no one wants to go there or anything, but I hung up on him midway because I've had enough of his anger now. Then the days of the court case came. I was feeling all kinds of jitters and I was nervous. What if it went wrong? What if I lose the money I've made from selling the house? All these kinds of questions were raising in my head, but I did not let them take control of me. I got dressed in a way that I said wasn't confident, put my best smile on, and I reached the court doors. It was the final hearing of the divorce, and it went incredibly well. Not only did I get to keep all the money from the house, I also got 100 k from Gail as alimony as legal obligation. I was shocked. I did not expect to win more money from him, but it was worth it for all the damages he's done to me and my mental health. I should accept this money with grace. The sullen expression on their faces just added to my glee, and I knew that they thought that they could rob me of my money and my house, but they probably weren't expecting to lose everything themselves. It's been a few days since then, and life has been relatively peaceful. I did get a phone call from my mother-in-law, where she was bashing me for what I've done, and told me I could never have a family of my own because I don't know how to take care of people that I'm just incredibly selfish, who only looks at her needs and not others. Apart from that, it's been okay. I got a new apartment for myself using the money I made selling the house, and now I can finally save up as much money as I want without having to worry about other people constantly asking for it. But let me know, guys. Do you think I went too far by taking him to court? Let me know in the comments down below. I was a little surprised when I was reading the comment section of this one, guys. Let me break down what some of the comments were saying. Some of them were actually coming up with the idea by saying, you know what, I don't really blame Gail. I mean, what's wrong with giving your parents 100000 when you have 200000 But there were other commenters basically saying, no, that's ridiculous. Like OP said, they've been helping his parents for years. They're trying to build their own house and they need that money. So this is where the comments really split apart. They were saying... They do not agree that OP should just sell the house, take the money because it's under her name. They thought that was disrespectful, but there was about 50% saying no, that was exactly what she needed to do. So guys, drop your comments down below. Let's discuss this one. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!